Welcome to the video two of the series, Theory of the Mind. Theory of the Mind basically is a therapeutic model which is given by Dr. John Kappas. We consider Dr. John Kappas as the father of modern hypnotherapy. Everything that is about the mind in your day-to-day -day life, the information, the inputs which is coming from the environment and the way you interpret it. How is all that happening? What is fatigue? Uh, you know, how do you get tired and how the integrated living model also that we will be introducing in a while from now that each video is interconnected. So do watch all the videos that are given uh, on our website. Thank you for watching them. Now understanding theory of the mind. So if I ask you all, obviously there is a thought, what is mind and where it is in our system? Usually people, you know, have different impressions when we ask what is mind, thoughts, or they say feelings, experiences, everything that is happening around us, the environments, the beliefs. However, let us introduce you to the real understanding of the model. Many people even misunderstand mind to be the brain. We've heard brain tumor, but we haven't heard mind tumor. So that itself is an inquiry that tells you how our mind and brain both are different, yet connected with each other. So, this is the first of its kind understanding. Mind is basically a ball of energy around you, which is the energy field or body biofield, what we call it. It has the capacity to hold the information in the form of whatever that is being exchanged with your environment. It's basically energy because we learned in the law of thermodynamics that every part or the whole universe is built with energy. Energy cannot be created, nor it can be destroyed. It can be transferred or transformed from one form to another. So what is this mind that is also doing the energy exchange with the environment? Also, we must have heard about some of you who are watching this video know about chakras. So there is a receiving and giving information that is also happening and that builds uh, the entire understanding of this energy field with the center of it in the pit of our stomach. That is how the word gut feeling comes in. Butterflies in the stomach when you're referring to whenever there is a sudden fear and the pang that happens is in the gut before every presentation or perhaps interview. You must have felt this. That's nothing else but the energy tingling that you're feeling in your belly. And often this tingling is satiated by food and hence we make the belly heavy. During examination, children also go through this where, you know, there is a lot of hunger that come in or maybe for a few, uh, hunger completely gets uh, shut. So you don't feel hungry at all because of the anxiety that you're going through. This is nothing else but the performance anxiety that we are referring to because earth also is a very big magnet. There's a north and south to that uh, earth and earth that we are connected to. There is a constant flow of that energy which is happening, which are grounded with gravity and the magnetic field of the earth in itself. And then there are seven energy centers which align with our endocrine glands, energy, uh, you know, that is flowing in and around us. And the information, as we say, is all being stored in this ball of energy, whatever that you're giving and receiving. It has the capacity to receive that interpretation and input and send it to the brain, where the brain then executes an internal command through neurochemical uh, nervous systems and, uh, you know, the wiring system that we have within our body. So signals coming from, signals coming from the mind is what is interpreted through the neuroreceptors and neurotransmitters who are there, uh, neurotransmitters that are there in our body. And then the feelings unlock from our limbic brain with the hypothalamus flushing down those chemicals. This is how the, the mind and the brain both are connected. And there are important energy centers that I just mentioned that align with our endocrine gland. So the environmental inputs which are coming in, those inter uh, you know, the interpretation of those inputs are understood by the chemicals in the body. And that is how there are, you know, glands that either produce more hormones or they reduce the quantity or the flow where we say hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia or hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. How is mind governing the entire internal chemical system? The neurochemical reactions within the body through neurohormones is what we are going to talk about in this way. Just to understand, because in our previous video, we did cover a part of the nervous system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic connections and how the flashpoint actually kicks in the parasympathetic nervous system. And when that nervous system, uh, parasympathetic side doesn't kick in, the panic happens. So we explained a part of the panic attacks. So now let's understand the theory of the mind. In this aspect, when we are now representing this as this ball of energy, which is the 2D representation now, it's primarily divided into two parts which is 10 to 12% is the conscious mind as we know 
the sachetman so what is the function of the sachetman conscious mind i'm sure you are already thinking about this so let me introduce you to the function of the conscious mind function of the conscious mind is to think logic analyze feel decide most importantly pass judgments all the judgment is up here because it's processing the information constantly but then you thought that your entire mind was doing all of this so what is this other 88 to 90% part of it? this is your subconscious mind the subconscious mind also besides being nine times bigger this is your storage device as well it is 6000 times more powerful everything that you are trying to put it as your beliefs and experiences within this is like a hard disk you were born with a blank hard disk pretty much and as i often say that if you know what the problem is if your hard disk knows what the problem is the hard disk also knows where the problem started from and hence regression that these we also say all the logical answers of your illogical questions that also come in the moment you come down to this part is where you know where and how these things have been associated and kept it in your heart so we will of course be assessing and however through hypnotherapy how to access this part in order to go into regression therapies and all your past experiences which are stored here so your subconscious mind is primarily like your hard disk storing your experiences and past associations this uh, subconscious mind is further divided into two parts these two parts are one the primitive mind as the name suggests primitive something that is age old very ancient so what is here is the evolutionary data and then the other part is called the modern memory let's talk about the primitive mind in a nutshell all the past life karmic data of your accumulated energy imbalances that you've had across time and space this is also there however there are many religions and cultures that do not believe into past life of course there are obvious reasons this we will discuss it in some other point in time and the purpose of this model is not to convert your belief system into something else the idea of this belief belief system uh, the idea of this model is to take you through a therapeutic model and people who believe in it they always you know and if you have any questions you can always write to us and we will get more clarifying uh, if you have any questions regarding this model we can always address them you can comment below the video and we will be more than happy to get in touch with you you can also contact our team for about 30 minute free consultation we'll again uh, online or on site whenever you are coming to our uh, holistic studio in lucknow or any other city wherever you are we can interact with you to explain more specific questions about this model so primitive mind besides holding the past life karmic data it also has the soul imprints and the dna imprints of all your ancestors across time and space so obviously because this genetic material or information that has come across generations so all your ancestral patterns and their emotional data besides being you know uh, characteris- uh, characterized by your how your nose will be or how your eyes will be hair texture body the rolling of the tongue as darwin explained or the color of the eye not only that is inherited but through generations also comes your emotional patterns and how your ancestors handle emotion that is why there are many diseases which are also called hereditary like diabetes or depression or you know cancer when they say that it's already in your genes technically all the information of all the diseases is there in your genes which is in your primitive mind but only how you interact through your interaction with your environment and how the message units which i'm going to talk about in a while from now when you interpret these message units how do you feel those feelings unlock a certain disease which is displacement of ease that you go through which is why perhaps you're here or you are consulting a therapist at antarman holistic studio so let me further explain that in the primitive mind there is also basic survival instincts all your survival instincts rather uh through the evolutionary time as we say the fight and flight response so whenever uh, because fight flight we spoke about in the history of the development of the human mind so you are more clear about what is fight so in a situation where you can tame that situation you go and fight whereas in a situation where the the challenge or the threat or the crisis is larger than you you choose to flight and besides that fight and flight we spoke about the pleaded which is modern day equivalent is equal to depression so depression we will make a separate video how to understand and how we treat depression at antarman holistic studio so uh, you know fear of falling and loud noises also there and uh, once you come to the antarman holistic studio when you have a specific question about this we will explain this in person that why these two particular uh, you know 
fears that we are born with. Hence, every other fear is acquired after you are born and hence they can be unacquired. So there'll, the, there'll be something which will, uh, if you have any particular fear or a phobia, the difference between the two, because there is, of course, there is a lot of difference between the, the two. For fear, there is a reference and for phobia, there is no reference. So a therapist will explain you that as well. Going to the modern memory, modern memory is everything about from your time, the time when you were born until now. Right from the time you were conceived, rather, let me put it that way. Right from the time when you were conceived until now, everything, what you've learned, gathered and your experiences are kept in the modern memory. Like how if we are since we are also comparing this with a computer analogy, uh, you know, as we said that the conscious mind is like a processor, which is constantly processing the information and the, the subconscious mind is like a hard disk. Uh, modern memory is like your D drive and the primitive mind, which is preloaded operating system that comes in, which are your survival instincts and DNA imprints is what is in the primitive mind. And that is how autonomic nervous system also functions. All your systems, how they will function, how the digestion will happen, how the respiration will happen, how the reproductive system works with each other, how every organ is defined with a certain function uh, to cleanse, clear, release toxics, lymphatic system, brain, eyes, ears, how they work in consonants and tandem with each other is what is all recorded within the primitive mind through the DNA, which is autonomically executed in the body. So there is a certain information. Now, because of the environmental stress, these organs go through a tremendous amount of an overload. And in that overload, how the software is causing that overload coming down into the body and translating into a disease or unlocking a disease and how to reverse it purely through a non-invasive a uh, drugless complementary approach is what this entire understanding of therapeutic journey with Antarman Holistic Studio will be. So our therapists are well trained. Each therapist that we are assigning you for this are all equipped and well trained into this whole understanding of the mind and how to completely reverse and help you. Even clinical disorders, we have people on board where they will be able to help you. So do not hesitate. At least come and take this 30 minute free consultation through this year. For that, you don't have to pay anything. Just come to our studio, take an online, wherever in any part of the world or, uh, you know, in India, wherever you are, we'll be able to help you as we are interacting through Zoom and, you know, the video that you're watching. So thank you for having that faith in us. So further going to the modern memory, modern memory is everything about the current life. So between the conscious mind and the modern memory, there is a filter. This filter is called critical filter or critical mind. Generally knowing, you know, what is the function of a filter? A filter keeps something within what is required and discards what is not required. Like how a chani does like while you are pouring the tea. In that, what are you discarding is the chai ki patti. Okay. And, uh, you know, the tea bags are separated from what is actually required. This filter also keeps the information what is required and only that information comes down based on the associations that we live with because we learn through identification and association, pechan and paraspar sambandhan, we say. Like giving an example where, and this filter is very unique for each one of us. Giving an example of a marker, as I'm saying, we learn through identification and association and just a toddler found a marker, that marker that he picks up and creates a masterpiece on the wall and mother gets upset and gives him a tight whack. Now, this marker is associated with that whack as a pain association. So, Pechan and Paraspar Samban with that marker is, uh, you know, the shout out loud and uh, the whack that mother gave. So, every time after that incident, the child will look at the marker, the child will remember that pain. Or sometimes an insect or a flying cockroach that comes in, then the mother screaming out loud and taking the slippers and maybe uh, a kind of a, you know, some kind of broom or stick or spatula and then you just kill that insect and then mother screaming out loud actually gets associated with that insect it's not the insect phobia it's the fear that got associated from that time and that stays as your association in the critical filter because this part of the critical filter is in the conscious mind and the part of this filter is in the subconscious mind please. this filter develops between the age zero to eight for each one of us because that is how uh, the discretion you know, of what is this filter also doing is to discriminate between what is wanted and not, not wanted. I want this. I don't want this. I like this. I don't like this. So all your likes and associations are built in this uh, as zero to eight years age. And then it gets updated, upgraded with information. And as you grow up, that continues until you die. So this filter will stay with you for the rest of your life, actually. And as a therapist, what we are working with, uh, with is 
psychotherapists work with the conscious mind as you are already seeing it we are working with your subcognitive mind which is the subconscious mind modern memory and the primitive mind how we regress so i'll talk about the regression therapies also you know whenever you come for this 30 minute consultation our therapist will explain you everything this filter is where we are working on your association from the past like maybe even those conditions which maybe a teacher ever said because this was my case one of my teachers said that you'll never become a good leader and that information stayed as the filter in the filter and uh, you know this is where it actually creates that sort of a discomfort and that belief because it came from a teacher you believe it that i'm not a good teacher so that association is what doesn't let you be confident in life a part of this is in the uh, you know let's also talk about how this filter develops as i'm saying that 0 to 8 years uh, this filter develops based on socio economic educational and religious conditioning s e e r conditioning is what we say how is this working around now uh, let's say a socio you know you dwell in the society in a certain way you can't talk to your elders like that you behave in a certain way you do not abuse things that are there around you uh, you have to be polite you have to be humble uh, you have to be supportive or you know this so called nice image nice or good person or a good boy or a good girl image that we want to maintain is also what is programmed in us by our parents because who is programming us we were born as i said without this filter so it's the conditioning which is given by your parents uh, or peers and people around you that's what we've uh, captured it and we've kept it as a part of the association economic when you go into we are in the middle class category or the upper middle class or the lower middle class and how can we afford things and not maybe even the slightest thing as a toy that you wanted in the childhood made you feel that mother said no we can't afford it so economic conditioning also how much i deserve you all your self esteem and deservability revolves around this then educational you know sun rises from the east sun whatever uh, you know we live through a certain experiences the temperature the seasons which part of the globe you are uh, maths or science and everything which is educational part that you also learn that is how you know how to relate with your environment because this filter also makes you relate and interact with your environment with the certain beliefs and uh, associations that we've had good and bad discretion also you can do it let's say if you've gone into a party and where you meet someone who's a powerful uh, leader or or maybe a personal secretary of a leader or a mp or an mla or a president or a vice president whatever so depending upon the tag the judgment comes in and that judgment is what will decide whose information should i copy it compared to maybe someone like a taxi driver or an auto driver or a clerk in a bank or someone or or a teacher maybe so teacher's information will stay and everybody else perhaps you went it out sometimes you're also uh, you know maybe you don't like soccer and someone talking about soccer or cricket match or chess or any such information which doesn't uh, you know stay in because it's not relevant your mind will went it out through this filter it's get it will get discarded so everything that you remember and not remember a husband forgetting the anniversary is also giving an indicator to the wife that you know the uh, the relationship is fading away because that's why maybe the filter is not uh, able to remember the important information even in schools and colleges when the subject is considered to be bad or tough it's not the subject which is bad or tough it's the way the teacher is also teaching it so there are identification and associations that we go through and uh, the, these associations stay with us for the rest of our lives and this these are the association that we try to reverse that's how therapy actually happens at the end because that filter will will copy things and make you believe i am confident versus i am not confident is coming from your references which are stored in this filter so as i said that the part of this filter is in the conscious mind and a part of this is in the subconscious mind the critical conscious and the critical subconscious critical conscious is the layer of judgment identification and the layer of emotional charge which is the critical subconscious mind its association with it as i gave an example of the marker or fire or glass that is breaking now this is brittle and it will prick me and it will uh, you know ooze out blood that's an association that the child will stay with us so the you know the the discretion that should i touch it should i not touch it also is the caution all those preferences how how do you make your choices and what the consequences are going to be uh, you know and every processing which is happening so from the processor to the association and the filter how the information will stay and when we are also comparing this to the entire computer analogy conscious mind being the processor subconscious mind being the hard disk this becomes your ram and we know that if the ram is overloaded the recall doesn't happen we all have e uh, equal memory 
it's the recall that gets affected because of the anxiety, because of the blocks of the conscious mind, resistance to change, uh, you know, or the perception. Because at times we say that, uh, you know, and this is the per perceptive filter also. When we say that problem is not problem enough, it's the perception of the problem that is the biggest problem. So this is, of course, uh, you know, you will understand this as you come and begin your therapeutic journey with us. Since I'm talking about the critical filter, let's understand one of the case studies of a 30-year-old or a 32-year-old man coming to us in a clinic saying, I'm not going to live for more than two days. Being in an international location, it now became a very big issue where he went through all the doctors and it's a matter of state insurance. So he, he checked all his, uh, you know, uh, tests and everything. And none of the tests ever suggested that he's not going to live. He was absolutely healthy. It was just the panic with that belief that I'm not going to live for more than two days. And as I said, that if your subconscious mind is like a hard disk, if it knows the belief, it will know where it started from, where that belief has come from, through the filter that I'm just trying to explain to you all. So we just asked him that ever since when this thought has got triggered, because there are triggers. So just be aware of the triggers. Now in that trigger mode, when he came, uh, we were talking about this and uh, we came to know that just about a couple of days ago, his office colleague's wife delivered a baby boy. And that baby boy was kept in the neonatal unit. You know how what is a neonatal unit where a premature baby is born. Uh, you know, an artificial uh, system is where the baby is kept into for the warmth and supply of all the resources that baby might require for survival. So when ever since then, uh, he saw all the, uh, you know, like the hospital smell has a peculiar association or the green curtains and white attire of the nurses and everything. So these were the associations that actually triggered a memory of him being a premature baby. He went back to his age of two day old after he was born and he was in a similar neonatal unit. And that time when the nurse took this baby to the mother uh, for feeding and after the feeding round when the nurse was handling the baby back to the neonatal unit in charge, that is the time for him being a two day old boy. The nurse passed this statement that I don't think so this baby will survive for more than two days. So that time given input because there was no filter went into the subconscious mind just as that triggered dormant memory then associated with the curtain colors, attire of the nurse, the smell of the hospital and the typical setup of even that neonatal unit. And exactly after nearly 30, 32 years, he went into a similar hospital, similar smell, similar attire of the nurse and similar neonatal unit actually brought that linguistic statement which because of course at the age uh, two day where you are just born, the language is not fully developed because this filter also develops around the language, how we use certain words. So that feeling is where that this baby is not going to live for more than two days is what became as the association that got triggered after 32 years. And that was the panic about. So it, it was not about that he's going to die because of something that is happening right now in his body, but it was a thought that was put or that by accident went into the child's mind because there was no filtering mechanism. Because this is also your inhibitory process. The critical filter also at this stage, someone calls you dumb or someone calls you inco uh, incompetent. You already know that the person's information doesn't need to go in unless he's an authority or she is an authority. So we copy some of these uh, informations based on how the identification and association is with the person. So that is why authority building becomes one of the biggest, uh, you know, tasks for a therapist to give you all the information about the therapeutic understanding. Otherwise, the filter will just not copy. That is why we always do therapy, not with a push that if someone comes in with, you know, if you're being pushed into therapy, therapies will or might not work. This is something which we all have to learn that do not bring clients with a push. You know, wives bring their husband, quit smoking or, you know, he snores a lot. Please fix him or mothers say this child is very hyperactive. Bring his energy levels down. We ask the person who is being fixed. Are you willing to go through this entire process of therapeutic understanding or therapies? And uh, they say no. If they say no, then there is no point in working with them. So do not push people who, who you are, you know, bringing. So do not push any of the clients for coming for therapies, things like that. So this is the understanding of the conscious mind. So this is the understanding of the critical filter, where the critical filter is the filter that actually filters out information. 
Now, when we are talking about computer, let's talk about uh, the input devices. What are the input devices that you are, uh, you know, operating out of? How the information comes in, like how a computer has keyboards, mouse, or the camera. What are your input devices? You've already guessed it. Yes, your five senses are the input devices. And through these five senses, the information is primarily coming into the conscious mind. And in the conscious mind, it stays for up to one and a half to two hours. This conscious mind is picking up information from your environment, body, conscious and the subconscious itself. The processing also is happening. Let's say if I'm Sanjeev Kapoor demonstrating how to make baigan ka bharta or any recipe, how to make pasta, you already are thinking of a recall, uh, you know, of uh, how to go back in time that, oh, my mother used to put it directly on the flame or used to put cuts and, uh, you know, oil around it and then made it. So you're already processing the information. Also, the nod that you're giving me at times or the smile that you're having, maybe perhaps, uh, you know, while watching this video is exactly there are so many aspects where uh, you're getting reminded of, yes, I know conscious mind, I know subconscious mind. So it's happening as a processor. Uh, maybe you're sitting in a cold or a warm space, the itch on your uh, body somewhere. All these are the message units, basically. And the, these message units come and stay for up to one and a half to two hours maximum. That is how we've trained. After this, conscious mind is not designed to store information. Also, sometimes, you know, in the examination context, children who uh, hold the book right before they enter into the examination hall, right till the last minute before they enter the examination hall, are relying entirely on this one and a half to two hours of memory. And beyond this, there is, uh, you know, something which uh, they will just immediately go in the examination hall and write everything what they know. And if the first ever question that they don't know the answer to is where the conscious mind or the critical filter gets completely blocked. So we need to understand the filter as well through the input. And as every processor comes with a capacity, your critical filter also has a capacity of its own beyond the conscious mind getting completely blocked. Like if there is a laptop and if I keep pressing enter, 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 enter or open 12, 13 windows and work on all. And if that puts the pressure on the RAM, you also know that you use the phone, 8 GB RAM or 12 GB RAM, whichever phone that you're using. And if you open too many applications, the phone will start lagging or get heated up. That's what exactly happens with the conscious mind. When it goes beyond 4,000 message units, everything which is in your environment right now, which is coming in through your five senses, is a message unit. The colors, dots on the wall, maybe patterns of the curtain that you see. Every hair, every background, every uh, even letter on the screen right now that you're watching uh, with all the colorations and letters and shapes and circles and everything is a message unit right now. And you're being overloaded with the information. And this is how even TV commercials overload you, Ekta Kapoor or any other... Uh, you know, a, a series these days on Netflix or anything that you're watching is also engaging you through the flashes and the visuals and the sound effects and the background score with the way the dialogues are delivered and, and recorded. It's all message unit. That is how we get glued to even the screen. That's how the identification and association, whichever genre that you like, like romance or maybe a crime thriller or, or comedy or anything which you love. That's how the filter keeps repeating what they like. Everyone, for example. Even in a book, fiction and a non-fiction that you pick up is based on the filter. What, what gives me thrill? What is through that software input which is coming in, which makes my body feel in a certain way? Your even food items. You go to a restaurant. When you like a restaurant, uh, food is good. And maybe the service was bad. So some of you will remember the restaurant for the food and the good quality. And some of you will actually give a, you know, like a lesser remark on Zomato or anywhere else that you've gone from. The service was very late or not very good. That's how you give reviews of a film and a movie as well. It's all about the filter. So from there, the input comes in into the conscious mind where you process it, keep it for one and a half hours to two hours. After that, what happens? Where does the information go? Logically, it says that it comes down in the modern, uh, modern memory. Yes, but before that, it gets filtered. Like post-lunch, you know, you go into this fatigue mode. When you start yawning, this is the state that you're into. This is the fogginess or the, you know, frizziness that you feel. Where you're not just about, you know, uh, having any recall. You're so fatigued that uh, even anxiety blocks your conscious mind. Like it's the filter. Where at a gunpoint, you even forget your name. Who am I? That blanking out. Suddenly someone comes and gives you a mic. Please say a few words. 
Now, exactly, please say a few words doesn't work because then you don't know suddenly someone coming and telling you. So that is the time when how confident or not confident you are also is the function of this field. Because you froze once, you froze for the second time, then the third time. Now there is a belief that I'm not confident. And what which are those, uh, you know, experiences from the past is there in the modern memory. So we regress the person back through the filter, bringing them down beyond this fog by a certain process called induction, which we will explain it again whenever you are here for the 30-minute consultation. There are several aspects which will explain it in one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, interaction as well. Because how this filter is, this filter is unique for each one of us. Hence, it needs to be explained also in a very unique way. And I think this entire model has also explained uh, your queries and answers that uh, you were looking for some of this. That is why we made these series of videos so that at least by watching these videos also you come to know that what blunder or what mistake are you making. And then you can fix it. This is way this, uh, you know this is the function of the filter that we are talking about. More loaded your filter is the less mindful you're likely. So mindfulness is the meditations that we keep doing online and on site when you close your eyes because maximum message units are coming either through your eyes or ears. So why are we sitting for meditation to actually deload and clear this filter through your breath, through a cleansing breath, or when you yoga, uh, you know when you do yoga. And you're just breathing in the positive energy, breathing out the negative energy. When, you know, some meditator, med meditation teacher has given you these commands, what does it mean? You're actually clearing the critical filter where you are cutting down on the message units. So by shutting your eyes, you're actually stopping a lot of message units and then shutting down your ears. And then the deep breath. That is how the, uh, you know, the critical filter also clears. Sometimes you come from the office, you're so fatigued, you just feel, don't feel like talking to anybody. Wife comes and asks you, how was your day? Even at that minute, the filter is so full that please give me a cup of coffee. So what are you doing by taking caffeine or cigarettes and nicotine and tobacco or sometimes even alcohol? People are trying to cope uh, with this fatigue state, which they don't know. So they are working or stimulating directly the hardware with the chemicals and that gives them relief. So even for de-addiction, hypnotherapy is a wonderful uh, tool. Uh, relationship dynamics, communication, everything is the function of this filter. So we will talk in there. After that fatigue and the filter that is foggy, when the information gets copied, here the information stays for up to 24 hours or until the time you go off to sleep. As soon as you go off to sleep, the information gets processed and through the dream processes, identification and association, it comes down into either pain or pleasure association in the modern memory. And these are the associations that remain with you for the rest of your life. So a good teacher or a bad teacher, uh, a good place or a bad place, good person or a bad person, good colleague versus bad colleague, you know, good food versus bad food. All these associations are there somewhere in your heart. This conscious mind has the rules or expectations and your subconscious mind has experiences. Whenever your exp expectations match with your experiences, life usually is on track. It makes you feel happy, satiated, satisfied, content. However, the moment your rules do not match with your experiences or your expectations do not match with your experiences. I'm an MBA topper. I need one lakh a salary per month. And if you're getting that salary, life is good. You will not need therapy. And many people, of course, they always deny that, no, I don't need sessions of therapy because you're coping. What you're trying to also do sometimes is in the name of coping, you have defense mechanisms. Like in psychology, some of you must have already heard about defense mechanics, rationalization. What are you doing? Where the experiences don't match, you try to change and rationalize with your rules and expectations saying, yeah, Pados ki bimla ko itna paisa nahi milta. I am still getting a better salary. Her husband even beats her. My husband is just shouting and screaming. Maybe he just doesn't talk about it. You're rationalizing, saying every state, oh, I'm beating my son because I don't want him to become, uh, you know, bad or go into a bad company. Everything that is happening is about rationalization. And then in the name of compromises and adjustments, you're trying to keep changing the rules. And then you actually avoid going through the therapy sessions. But then that chaos doesn't solve. There are a lot of things that even in the primitive mind, like karmic challenges that come. People who trigger you for no reason. You've never even met them or there is nothing wrong that they've done with you. But you still get triggered. So these triggers association are also in the filter and rules versus experiences. And the conscious mind is interpreting it through techniques like, uh, let's say, cognitive behavior therapy or psychotherapy. When people go, those people are mainly talking to your conscious mind. And conscious mind will have rationalizations and defense mechanisms. The difficult part is to bypass or break those defenses, bring them down through the critical filter 
and into these experiences through regression therapy and then heal and resolve it from the root cause. Because everything that you're trying to resolve, not just breath work will change that association. Breath work will only clear up the filter. The breath work will not resolve your issue. So, of course, there is another video of integrated living that I'm going to put out. Please watch that video also that how exactly the wellness works at all four levels and what techniques help you go through. So where your problem is, where the entry point is either thought or emotions or energy or physical body, where are you operating from and where there is a discomfort or a dis-ease, any of these layers when they are at displacement, how to restore that and how to recover from that ailment or disease that you're going through. So, you know, the happiness or the sadness is purely the association with rules versus expectation. Like until a certain period in time, you're eating chocolates, you're eating sugar. And sugar, of course, is very addictive. And now suddenly doctor tells you, oh, you can't, uh, you know, have sugar. Otherwise, you are on a borderline diabetic. Uh, and India is a diabetic capital in the world. So, you know, when you say, uh, a doctor comes and says something like this, then what will happen? You will obviously go back and change the rule because all those uh, caramel custards and puddings that you've had in your life and all those good associations with the rasgullas and gulab jamuns that you've had. Now the doctor is saying if you eat any of that, it's going to cause you diabetes. Now what will you do? Experiences you can't do anything about because all those zillions of experiences that you've had, you can't go and change them. But what you change rationalize. Oh, anything from now, I will not eat the gulab jamun. But day one, you don't do it. Day two, you don't do it. Day three, you don't do it. But then there is some party or a, uh, you know, bacche ka mundan or naam karan or wherever, you know, uh, housewarming, wherever you go, there is something where at, at a function where all these nice pastries or cakes and puddings which are served, now you're tempted. The moment you break that association, again, you feel guilty. So all those emotions are also uh, programmed in your filter. The conditioning that mother gave. किसी को पानी पिलाना अच्छी बात होती है और आप आपने पानी नहीं पिलाया और हेल्प नहीं करी या जो भी करा या नहीं करा उस चीज का यू नो व्हेनेवर यू क्रिएट दिस काइंड ऑफ एसोसिएशन वेयर यू डिड समथिंग और डिड नॉट डू एनीथिंग अबाउट दिस एसोसिएशंस दैट यू हैड बेस्ड ऑन व्हाटएवर कंडीशनिंग योर पेरेंट्स सेड गिविंग वाटर टू अ थर्स्टी पर्सन और यू नो गोइंग एंड हेल्पिंग आउट समवन हु इज इन हेल्पलेस कंडीशन और होपलेस कंडीशन इफ यू डोंट हेल्प देम देन यू फील गिल्टी there are people who are compulsively not able to say no where is all this coming from it's all coming from the conditioning because mother or the father was somewhat like that you cannot save money money has certain association money doesn't grow on tree there are so many beliefs and associations with money relationship place perception uh, associations confidence no confidence is all here in the filter and rules versus experiences so therapy is a must and See, when, when people talk about mental health, let's also address something which is the, about the mental health. People fear, you know, that if I go to a therapist or a, or a consultant uh, who's from this field, I will be labeled as mad or, you know, someone who has mental disorder. Please do not take this, you know, at the face value. Mental disorder becomes a mental disorder when you don't learn to deal with your beliefs and emotional issues. Let's have an emotional... Uh, you know, therapist who's like, you know, we have a family therapist or a family physician, a concept of a family doctor, but we don't have a concept of having a family doctor or a family therapist. Please do not, uh, you know, let's also understand that the mental health becomes mental health because we do not take care of the emotional health or the stress that we go through on the daily basis. In the name of these copings, you keep deal dealing and denying uh, and of course, your worthiness also is there that should I spend so much on myself to go? Or oh, maybe if a doctor's pill is solving my problem, why should I go for a therapy? That's what we will explain again, uh, you know, in the integrated living model as well, that we are all loving shortcuts and we don't want to spend on our own mental or emotional well-being. A mental case becomes a mental case because emotional health is ignored. So here at Antarman Holistic Studio, we take care of your emotional breakdowns first. Because people have this taboo that if I go to such a therapist, I'll be labeled as mad. Mothers keep saying this to their daughters that tumhare liye achha ladka nahi mile. Agar tum mentally uh, ill ho jao. At Antarman, we also do a lot of relationship compatibility before even people come together uh, before the wedding. So come do meet us at Antarman Holistic Studio to understand this entire model even in more details and how to go about this whole thing. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me. 
And if you have any questions, do, do feel free to write to us. We'll be more than happy to over a 30-minute free consultation help you get your own answers. Thank you so much.